excuse me. Professor, how are you holding up? I know how heavily grief weighs upon one's heart. I lost my mother some time ago. It was... Forgive me my moment of weakness. Even all these years later, I cannot recall that time without feeling the pain as if it were brand new. Just know that I am praying for your mind and your heart to find peace. First Tomas, and now Monica. I do have a theory, though I admit it is nothing more than speculation. Both Tomas and Monica have each gone missing at one time or another. It was reported that when Monica returned from her disappearance, she began to act like a completely different person. As if, perhaps, the real Monica had been killed and replaced by an imposter. Thinking of it like that, it is possible that this Solon had been impersonating Tomas for some time. How they managed such a convincing change of appearance, though, I still do not understand. Yes, this is mine. Thank you for returning it. Professor. You're certainly not going easy on me. You fight like a mercenary, not a knight. You hunger for victory, pure and simple. You may not be aware of it yourself, but I see it. Indeed. Knights ought to have some hunger. I've always thought so. They depend too much on their swords. Only when they're rested away do knights consider their hands and feet as weapons. That's not how it was for warriors of old. They weren't limited by their tombs. Victory is what matters, not the method of achieving it. That's the attitude to adopt. I detect that in your style. It is plain to see. You may take it however you like. I believe the difference between us lies within that hunger. But where does it come from? From the start, I was aiming to win. Yet I couldn't defeat you. Then I remembered something you said before. Indeed. I was raised to value strength above all else. Whereas you had a reason, an ambition, pushing you toward that hunger. So tell me, what was the reason? Why were you driven to become so strong? That's a mercenary's answer, to be sure. So that is the source of your hunger. I suppose I must find my own. Ah, uh, if we're to get along, I think not. I'll be content if you continue to train with me. Perhaps it will come to me as I swing my sword. Honestly, what do they all take me for? I'm fine. Perfectly and completely fine. It's hardly different from daytime. I'm not scared. Professor? Is that you? Oh, well, <laughs> good evening! <laughs> oh, I left something in the dining hall, so I'm on my way to fetch it. But you don't need to come with me or anything like that. I'm fine on my own, really. You weren't? 
Oh, apologies for making an assumption. The truth is, everyone I come across asks if I'd like some company. They all seem to think I'll be scared wandering alone at night. So rude and presumptuous, you know. I'm perfectly capable of being on my own. Hey, Professor, wait! I, um, well, I thought it might be nice to walk and talk together to the dining hall, shall we? To be abundantly clear, this has nothing to do with my non-existent fear of ghosts. Oh, you must be bored. Fantastic, then. Do you mind, um, filling the void with some chatter? Some find silence to be a bit unsettling, after all. Okay, I confess. I am scared of ghosts. The monastery is unnerving to me at night. So, can we talk about something, please? Anything. I've noticed for quite some time now, you treat all your students equally, don't you? You've never treated me differently simply because I'm younger than the others. And I've always appreciated that. Isn't it rather obvious? I'm roughly two to three years younger than the rest of the class. Have you just not been paying close enough attention to those you teach? That's poor form for a professor. Oh, there! I found what I was looking for. Well, I'd better be on my way now. Good night! Believable. Professor. Ah, Professor. Always a pleasure to see you. I wonder. Might you have a moment to chat? Uh, come now. You have no need to be on guard. I'd never cause you harm. You're far too valuable a specimen... Uh, well, that is to say, too valuable a member of the Academy staff. Indeed, the further my crest research progresses, the closer you come to learning the truth of your heritage. Is it not so? When I learned you bore the lost crest, the very crest of flames itself, I set about learning everything I could about your past. What was the origin of your bloodline? How have the events of your life been shaped by your lineage? I became somewhat obsessed, I must admit. Nothing so crass as an investigation. No, I researched. I spoke to mercenaries whom you've worked with in the past to learn about your life before the Academy. Of course, I also contacted your father's old mercenary crew. Quite an interesting lot, they are. It was difficult work, since I could not speak with Gerald himself. I am quite sorry for your loss. By all accounts, your father was a good man. I'm excited to share with you what I learned, but I do ask that you correct me if I am mistaken on any account. The story begins with Gerald serving as captain of the Knights of Seros. There was a woman at the monastery with whom Gerald was quite close. At first, it seemed obvious this mystery woman was your mother. Alas, that cannot be the case. The timing is all wrong. As it was told to me, the woman in question passed away shortly before Gerald left the monastery. Yet your birth occurred sometime later, while Gerald was taking work as a mercenary. This, of course, presumes your age is accurately reported. If you were born sooner, well, the story would be quite different, would it not? Oh, I am aware. You two were certainly enigmatic, as far as mercenaries go. For example, Gerald never once spoke of his time serving as captain of the Knights. That's quite a secret to keep for all those years. In the end, your old acquaintances had little definitive to say about either of you. However, 
they all agreed on one thing. Your father and yourself were a strong pair, warriors to be respected and feared. You in particular. In fact, many came to know you as the Ashen Demon. They say you would destroy your enemies without a hint of emotion on your face. The mercenaries I spoke to revered you as a living legend of sorts. So, that is what I learned. And I admit, it is barely more than I knew before. The next step in my research is to ask your blood for answers and hope that it is more forthcoming than your past acquaintances. Well, hello, Professor. You came all the way to my room to... Oh. You've brought the materials from your lecture I slept through. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's rare for a nice professor like you to be so strict. Please, Professor, you must understand how difficult it is for me to fight the demon of drowsiness. <sighs> Just talking about it makes me sleepy. Oh no, I couldn't possibly. I would certainly injure myself if I tried to train while drowsy. I must compliment you, though. By this point in most conversations, I'm bored senseless. But I'm enjoying this. I wonder why. What is it about you that fascinates me so? You're definitely a strange one. In truth, your very nature is odd. You're definitely not a commoner, but you don't seem like a noble either. You're something else. And yet you can wield one of the hero's relics. You're like a hero in some silly legend. Or you could be a villain who came here to enact some evil plot. That wouldn't surprise me either. Hey, Professor, will you ever allow me to investigate that crest of yours? It won't hurt a bit, I swear. I'm sure I could find out all sorts of things about your crest. And you. Of course, I'm not as experienced with such research as Professor Hanneman, but I do what I can. Someday, I think I might like to become a crest scholar. You never know. Oh, don't trouble yourself. I didn't mean now. I've got a lot of other research I'm working on at the moment. I tend to start a project, get bored, and then leave it be. I might be ready to investigate your crest soon. I'd have to tidy up a bit first. On that note... <sighs> Good night, Professor. Professor? <laughs> Professor, a pleasure to see you. I've never been very good at praying. I was here to confess my foolishness. While I'm at it, may I confess something to you too? I realize what a burden I've been. On you, I mean. After every breakup, I neglect my work. And I know how that affects you. I'm completely worthless as a woman. Can you imagine how that feels? Oh, I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. I just know it. You think so too, don't you? Really? So maybe there's still hope for me. <sighs> Who am I kidding? I've known for years how hopeless I am. <sighs> What's wrong with me? It's not my looks. I'm still gorgeous. Or am I? 
Be honest, do I look old? No, not possible. I'm the songstress who swept the Empire off its feet. Men professed their love for me hourly. It can't be my looks. I knew I was right. I'd be in real trouble if I weren't this beautiful. Oh no, if the problem isn't my looks, and they are not the problem, then it must be... what? My personality? A girl can tell a lie when she hears one. You think there's a problem, don't you? I suppose I can be a bit unkempt. I do have a short temper, and I may be a little lazy, sometimes. But I've always heard fellas, you know, like a woman with a few flaws. Seems to me there are plenty of flawed girls who have landed themselves a good man. So maybe... My trouble is I'm not imperfect enough. Do you think I could use a few more flaws? Why? Do you think I'm flawed enough already? appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food. Oh, is something hiding just behind that book? That ring! I have seen it before. Ah, I know. Gerald showed that ring to you beside a grave. Do you recall? He said he wished for you to have that ring one day. That means it's yours. He also said that you should gift that ring to someone special. He also said that you should gift that ring to someone special. Help. That was help. This will be useful. It was nothing. Of course, I get this. Could quite an this could be used. It was nothing. I was right. What now? I've got something I want to ask you. It 
seems like you just know everything. Got through that without trouble. That worked out well. I suppose it's working. I can really do this. Am I doing all right? I hope I'm not too off. It is so much fun to sing with others. Am I starting to master this? I'm pleased to have been invited. I am grateful. Of course. How quickly this delightful time has passed. However, we must return to our work. I'll give it my own. I have so far left to go. There's so much left to learn. Ready. for greatness. Shine brighter. I suppose. I'll get it. 
You're weak. Stay focused. Continues. I'm glad I can count on you. Luck wasn't with you. Next time, bring your friends. I can feel the difference. I saw that coming. Who's next? Over already. way. Ha! <laughs> 
19. Ready. even here. what a real man looks like. Bring your friends. I expect no less. Efficient. Not good enough.
I will get stronger yet. Next time, bring your friends. I can feel the difference. Bad at all. My technique could use some polish. I still have much to learn. Professor. Got through that without trouble. I always was a quick study. Am I starting to master this? <laughs> I'm starting to get it. This isn't so hard. You've done me a great service. 